Are you thinking about moving to South Florida? Wait. Because in this video, I'm going to tell you the top seven reasons why you probably would want to think twice before moving to South Florida. Oh, what's going on, everybody? Vitaly here, your trusted a local real estate agent here in the beautiful South Florida. And in this video, perhaps against my better judgment and at the risk of shooting myself right in the foot, I'm going to discuss why moving to South Florida may not be the best decision for you at this time. And I know, I know, you've probably already fallen in love with the award-winning beaches, the sunshine, and the freedom that Florida has to offer. But as your trusted real estate advisor, I still want to walk you through some of the negatives you may encounter living in Florida. So without further ado, reason number one not to move to South Florida is high population growth. It's true, everybody wants to live in Florida, but that may come at a cost. In case you didn't know, Florida is currently ranked the third most populous state in the United States, which is mostly driven by folks moving to the state of Florida from places like New York and California. As reported by CBS News, the population increased by 359,000 people from 2022 to 2023, leading one population growth director with the Bureau of Economic and Business Research of University of Florida to say it was the highest number it's ever been. And in the next five years, Florida's population is expected to increase by around 300,000 people every single year. That's more than 800 new residents every single day. According to the same source, quote, in 2020, to the 60 to 69 year old age group represented the largest share of people moving to Florida from other states, according to the data taken from the U.S. Census Bureau's American Community Survey. And the second largest age group moving to Florida was people ages 50 to 59. Reason number two why you may not want to move to South Florida is the weather. It's no secret that Florida is home to some of the nation's most devastating hurricanes, such as the Labor Day hurricane of 1935, which was the first ever recorded storm categorized as Category 5, killing more than 400 people, as well as Hurricane Andrew, which was also a Category 5 hurricane that made landfall in Dade County in 1992, becoming the ninth costliest hurricane in U.S. history. And of course, another notorious hurricane, Hurricane Michael. It was also a Category 5 hurricane that made landfall in the Florida a panhandle in 2018. But not to worry, you're not likely to encounter a hurricane in Florida every day of the year, but the typical hurricane season ranges from June 1st to November 30th. And of course, get ready for some random heavy thunderstorms and rains and even occasional tornadoes like we have recently seen in Fort Lauderdale. Reason number three not to move to South Florida, following up on this whole weather situation, is heat and humidity. With average temperatures hovering right around 90 degrees, which may already feel like a catastrophe, things may get a little more chaotic when you factor in the humidity index. I'll never forget my wife's reaction when she first moved to Florida from Arizona and so quickly realized how not so hair friendly Florida really is. Poof. It is also worth mentioning that historically August is the hottest month of the year in Florida and the most humid period runs from June through September. All right, moving on to reason number four why Florida may not be the best state for you to live, and that is the homeowner's insurance crisis. Unfortunately, the homeowner's insurance costs continue to rise, and insurance companies are more scarce than ever in the region, and there is no real solution in sight. And to understand what's going on, let me explain to you real quick how we got here to begin with. According to Forbes, quote, after the massive losses from the 2004 and 2005 hurricanes, insurance companies such as State Farm, the nation's largest home insurer, notified Florida officials it was scaling back operations and it would stop offering property insurance to residents. Other major insurers followed suit. I would also speculate that significant amounts of fraudulent claims have in some way, shape, or form contributed to this mass exodus of insurance companies. Forbes went on to report that, quote, that left Florida homeowners with few options. With the exception of the state-run insurer of less resort, Citizens Property Insurance, 
or a contingent of small startups that are mostly backed by private capital. And of course, you can still get homeowner's insurance in most cases in Florida, but it does help to be prepared just in case you come across any challenges down the road. Going into reason number five not to move to Florida is HOA or homeowner associations. For those of you not familiar with HOAs, a homeowner association is defined as, quote, an organization in a subdivision, planned community, or condominium building that makes and enforces rules for properties and a residence. Those who purchase property within an HOA's jurisdiction automatically become members and are required to pay dues, which are known as HOA fees. Some associations can be very restrictive about what members can do with their properties, while others may give residents more freedom. Homeowners associations are so popular in the state of Florida that a mere 44.5% of all Florida residents live in HOA communities. That's almost half of Florida's homeowners. And for perspective, the second highest population is in Georgia with a significantly lower rate of 21.8%. So to make a long story short, there's a lot of homeowners associations in the state of Florida and there's a lot of people living in them. Of course, homeowners associations do offer a lot of benefits that people do you enjoy, such as keeping the community's aesthetics and cleanliness consistent, offering additional security, and giving access to some great amenities, such as clubhouses, pools, fitness centers, pickleball courts, tennis courts, you name it, a lot of these associations got it. That said, on the flip side, some of the restrictions could get pretty inconvenient for a lot of people. Some common HOA restrictions include not allowing pets at all, or at the very least, restricting the type of pet you can bring in, not just by breed, but also by size. Rental restrictions, meaning you can either rent out your property or not be able to rent your property at all. Some associations even put timelines of how long you're supposed to own the property before you're allowed to rent it out. Vehicle restrictions are also very common, such as not being able to have a truck, a commercial vehicle, a motorcycle, or a boat. And of course, HOA fees. Some of them range from a couple of bucks a month to hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a monthly basis. And let's also not forget this whole idea of special assessments. According to a source, HOA special assessments are defined as, quote, extra unusual fees that you may be charged by your HOA board under certain conditions. These costs are usually levied by the board only in emergencies such as in the case of unexpected large-scale damages. Special assessments can be further charged in most neighborhoods under HOA restrictive covenants. This includes all homeowners living in HOA-governed communities, not just condominium owners. And even though the definition mentioned emergency scenarios, I have personally in my experience come across situations where the board would decide to complete some type of a project on behalf of the entire community, such as repainting homes or buildings or perhaps changing the roofs. And guess who's going to pick up those massive bills? You, the homeowner. So if you are looking to make your move down to South Florida, chances are you will encounter a lot of these HOA communities. And it helps to have a local knowledgeable real estate expert such as myself by your side to evaluate every single property, every single HOA community to make sure that it checks all the boxes for you. And of course, if you do not want HOA communities at all in your search, we can filter that out and only present you with a list of inventory that does not belong to an association. And another reason not to move to Florida is the astronomical home prices. And I'm sure you've heard in recent news that Florida actually just overtook New York as the nation's second most valuable housing market. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that if you're looking for some affordable housing in South Florida, you're probably going to be extremely disappointed. Let me give you a quick example using my local market of Boca Raton here in South Florida. Boca Raton, just like so many other incredible cities and markets out there throughout South Florida, was impacted greatly by incredible levels of demand, very scarce inventory, and during and post-COVID times, 
historically low interest rates. And because of that, the median sales price in Boca Raton went from $901,000 in 2022 to $1,011,000 in 2023. If we look at the average sales price in Boca Raton, it went from $1,536,986 in 2022, all the way up to $1,732,404 in 2023. It's true, if you want to enjoy the sunshine and the award-winning beaches, you are going to have to pay for it. And as a side note, it does help to have an incredible, aggressive real estate agent such as myself representing your interest in finding you the best deal possible and also negotiating the best deal and the best terms for you as you make your way through the housing market in the state of Florida. And before we wrap this up, I just want to share with you two bonus reasons why moving to Florida may not be the best option for you at the moment. Number one is the cost of living. Everybody knows that South Florida is so expensive, especially in comparison to other areas of the United States. Anything from grocery expenses to education, medical, car expenses, living slash housing expenses, entertainment, and everything in between, it is a very well-known fact that South Florida is a lot more expensive than a lot of the other places that you may be used to. So as a piece of advice, just make sure that you are financially prepared if you do decide to make your way down to the sunny state of Florida. And another bonus reason as to why you may want to delay your relocation to South Florida, and I would say it's it's the wildlife. Depending on where you are in Florida, you may see some interesting stuff. Anything ranging from chickens to wild peacocks to alligators and of course the notorious iguanas. That said, it's not really that big of a deal for a lot of folks out there, but sometimes you do wonder just walking outside whether you're at the zoo or on the public street. Well, this wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you have made it this far, please comment the rocket ship emoji down below so I can give you credit for being the committed and the loyal patron that you are. Also, thank you so much for supporting the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing the content. And of course, if after all of these reasons not to move to Florida, you have still decided to become a part of our beautiful state, please feel free to reach out anytime. We're at 561-303-6030 to help you with any and all real estate needs here in South Florida and beyond. Thank you so much again for watching, and we will see you in the next one.